Hey guys, it's Mike here from Ace Health Center Podiatrist. I am here today reviewing up the Hoka or Hoka Bondi 8. Now, this has obviously been a very, very popular shoe and it was one of the first shoes that did come out with that max stack height and extra cushioning. And it still lives up to its name, all right? So we'll start off just with the upper. The upper feels really nice. We've got an engineered mesh that runs the whole way through. We've got a lycra type material again that kind of covers the inside collars and up the back of the tongue. And I really like that material. It feels premium, it feels smooth, it feels nice around the skin and the socks there. So I'm glad that they went with that and didn't come out with a slightly cheaper feeling material such as like the New Balance 1080 hats. Now the upper is super comfortable. We've got plenty of cushioning, plenty of padding around the outsides and around the collared area. The tongue is nicely cushioned as well. A couple of layers of fabric, extra bit of foam just through the tongue, and that provides a really nice, comfortable, stable feel to it. The tongue isn't gusseted down, but that said, because it's a little bit thicker, it doesn't tend to move too much as you do slide the shoe on, and I don't feel like it moves too much either when you are wearing the shoe, walking, running, which is absolutely fantastic. Now the heel cup at the back, the heel cup is semi-firm, so I'd normally expect a hocker to have a slightly firmer heel counter around the back, just because they do aim to try and create an extra bit of stability. Obviously with using softer foams and more foam, they need to kind of do things to offset the fact that that might cause it to be a little bit unstable. And I would have liked to have possibly seen a slightly firmer heel cup around the back, just to try and provide an extra bit of stability to kind of live up to its name as such. Now, the foot sits into the foam, obviously, as the rest of the hawkers do, so your foot probably sits around about that line there, so it's quite deep within the foam, again, to try and increase that stability. That said, so like, as a podiatrist, I normally give the shoe, or in the past, have given the shoe to people who a little bit unstable, slightly excessively prone, uh, supinate, um, so their foot rolls outwards a little bit more than the average foot. And I feel like this has lost its way and I started having a few issues with it for a few of the older models as well. And I almost feel like the heel isn't quite wide enough to create a really stable base. The forefoot is super stable and that's fantastic. So as soon as people kind of hit the forefoot, it is stable and it does kind of roll off in the position that you want. But coming down for people who do land on the outside a little bit, it is just too soft through there. And I find that's a little bit of an issue. And I would like to say that these obviously kind of compete with other max cushion stable shoes. So along the lines of this, of what I tell people to get as well as this, would be more of a Ciccone Echelon or a Brooks Dyad or a New Balance 880. So something that's a little bit broader, a little bit more stable, slightly straighter last. And yeah, I feel like I'm moving away from this shoe a little bit now just because of that extra soft foam that doesn't seem to be quite stable enough for what this shoe is meant to do. That said, for a neutral foot type with just you know, a standard run, someone who wants just something for comfort, for mile upon mile, I feel like this is great. I feel like the foam densities and the amount of cushioning and stack height work really, really well together. The cushioning through walking isn't overly soft, so it's not like, say, your Nike Invincible, which is another max cushion shoe. It's not as bouncy as that, and quite honestly, it doesn't feel as stable as that through the heel either but it's got a nice feel to it, nice rock off. You have got quite a big bevel back to it to try and create that rocker sensation coming through the foot. And you do feel that as well, and that does feel quite nice. The shoe obviously isn't very flexible at all, and there's a lot of people and podiatrists that would prescribe this shoe for things like arthritis through like the first metatarsal, so through the big toe there. And I feel like, or I know that now a lot of the other shoes that are max cushions, they don't flex through the front anyway. So where this used to be a slight standout for certain like conditions and pathologies, a lot of the other shoe companies now, because they've moved towards this maximalist type of shoe, have changed their philosophies in where the shoe should flex or how the shoe should move. So even things like the Brooks Glycerin, 
that's pretty much a rocker forefoot. The new Asics Nimbus, that's got a bit of a rocker to it as well, and it's not too flexible through that forefoot. So for those other pathologies, there's a huge range of shoes now, and you're not just stuck with the Hocker Bondi. People love this as well. They obviously got a leather upper version for workwear, and I can see why people would want to wear this. It's something that I feel like I could last all day on my feet on and provide just kind of all day comfort. But as I said before, if you've got a foot that excessively pronates or supinates a little bit too much, I wouldn't say that this is gonna last for you. And we're talking about that durability factor as well. So, I mean, these foams through here, it's an EVA based foam, which does provide a little bit of bounce. It, it's not like old school EVA, it is quite nice but it does compress quite quickly through the outside and that does reduce the durability of this shoe and reduce the stability of it over time as well. So yeah, look for a neutral foot who just wants something for everyday comfort. This is right up there with your Asics Nimbus, with your Brooks Glycerin and obviously the price point points out towards that as well. So this is on sale over here in Australia for $280. And I feel like that is a good price point for what it is. But I feel like the Hocker Bondi has lost its way a little bit. We used to have the Hocker Evalon, which was kind of more their top range neutral shoe. And this has kind of taken over from that now. Obviously that didn't sell quite as well as they hoped. But I feel like this has kind of, yeah, lost its way in that fact. And it's moved more to a neutral shoe rather than a neutral stability shoe. So I guess that's something just to keep in mind. I'd say try all the others on, but if you want something just for all day comfort, don't have that excessive movement, this is a great option for you. I'd like to thank Athletes for Pacific Fair for supplying us the shoes today to enable us to do these reviews, and I hope that helps you pick out your next pair of runs.